Time for some playoff hockey. This is the first game that I've played for the 63 Western Hockey League condensed season replay since the Stan Chuk Maxwell game that I did. After that one, I don't know, I just felt kind of not necessarily done with this for a little while, but I just kind of wanted to let the memory of that game linger for a little while before getting back to uh, playing out this season. Of course, uh, Stan Maxwell and the Los Angeles Blades did not make the playoffs. I decided I would just do the top four as long as the top four were at least to clear three points ahead of um, anyone else in, in the uh, bottom four. And so this here's the Northern Division final between the Vancouver Canucks and the Seattle Totems. The Seattle Totems will have home for games one, three, and five. And again, it's everything's condensed, uh, you know, a little shaven down. So I'm going to do a best of five, not a best of seven, as was done historically. And I think especially if I shut up and get to it, I can probably get through an entire playoff series uh, with this, uh, with uh, just talk hockey. Uh, I, I've... I don't know. I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of hoping that this actually will not go five games, just because then it'll creep in. Maybe it'll be a little tempting to go to Paradise Hockey for the fifth and final game for the series. But uh, I don't know. One thing about doing this that I think I've learned, and it's really not a knock on Paradise, but I don't know if I really like Calico Projects, or at least if I do like Calico Projects, I think I need two games that are similar that take about the same amount of time to play. There's just something about having two games that are quite different in the way that they play in the length of time, the amount of time that it takes to play them, that, uh, I don't know, that just didn't really work for me. So, but, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I tried it, I experimented with it. And anyway, so yeah, Vancouver's going to be on the road for this one here. They finished second in the Northern Division. Seattle finished first. I don't think we need really any more introduction than that. Let's get this thing going here. And I might, again, I might move the pocket and point some things out here, or I may not. I just want to have this here and have that option open. Where it's going to be, actually, the Canucks are going to start with it. So it's going to be Jim Baird here with possession. And Baird with the four, he's going to be unable to do anything with it. So we're going to take two more cards off here. We're one sequence in. The second sequence sounds Phil Maloney. So Canucks with the first couple of possessions here. Maloney will be able to put it through to a team player and that team player unfortunately is the joker i basically in any part of the sequence when it's uh when it's a joker i just don't bother i'm going to burn another card here and it's going to be the first possession here of the game here up to the seven and a half minute mark for the seattle totems but uh barlow there bob barlow he's unable to uh, do anything with it so two more coming off the uh, uh top of the deck here and this time it's going to be Don Chupka here with it. Hopefully I'm pronouncing his name correctly. And with the king, he's going to be able to get it through too. Let's see here the queen because yeah, kings and right queens here. So the queen in this case, that's going to be Bill McFarlane. McFarlane with the ace is going to be one nothing here for Seattle. And just double check, I'm pretty sure it's about 10 minutes into it. Yeah, I just have a lot of self, self-doubt. I was 99.9% .9 sure that that was 10 minutes into it, but still I wanted to pause and double-check. So it's one nothing Seattle. Uh, Bill McFarlane with the gold, Chupka with the assist. Let's uh, flip for a secondary assist, nine of hearts. We're looking at uh, Leonard. I think it's Jerry Leonard with the... Uh, of course, I haven't played this in about 10 days. I should go and look at a few names here. It might be a little rusty, but I'm not even sure that I'm going to keep stats here for the postseason. Uh, the season part of it's done. I might do an update and show scoring leaders. I guess I did that already. Anyway, it's going to be here, uh, Bob Cabell here, Robert Bob Cabell for the Vancouver Canucks, and Cabell is going to be able to set somebody up in scoring position. That somebody's going to be Jim Baird, and Jim Baird with the five. We have a 1-1 game here, so... So it's a 1-1 hockey game now, and it's a uh, bear from Bob Cabell, and the five of spades is Hutchinson there, Ron Hutchinson, okay. Uh, 12 and a half in, so up to the 15-minute mark now. It's going to be the Canucks again with possession here. Ron Matthews, Matthews, he is going to set up uh, Trent Beatty here. Trent Beatty in the slot of the queen. We look here, kings and red queens only. Al Miller with a the save there for Seattle. Up to, I believe, the 17 and a half minute mark now with the six. And the 10, that means basically Bob Sabrin has it Sabrin. He connects with uh, Gordy Sinclair. Gordy Sinclair here with the queen. So we look over here. Villamir can only surrender on a king. And uh, let's see here. Now we have a four here for Dom Ward. Dom Ward here with the jack unable to penetrate the Canucks defense. So a couple of more cards are burned. And as I uh, sus uh, suspected, that's the end of the first period. So I'll have to timestamp this one. Um, sorry, I'm stammering a bit here. And it's also late here too, so I'm trying to talk quietly. But I wanted to get this on the go. Uh, so I'll have to timestamp this one. This is the end of the first period. We have a one-all game. I'm going to pause and shuffle. Okay, I played the bulk of this with Deck of Cards. I think it might be deckofcards.com online. So hopefully I have these uh, uh, shuffled as well as uh, 
you know, using the site where you can just click shuffle over and over to make sure that the cards are shuffled well. I was going to even joke off the top, and I don't think that I did, that this is basically to determine who will lose in the final. <laughs> I'm going to make that bold prediction. Uh, now that I've said that, watch there be a Northern Division upset. But I basically, whether it's the Seals or the Buckaroos in the South, I don't think either of these teams can beat either of those teams. But it remains to be seen. Come to think of it, actually, should San Francisco, like they did historically, upset the Buckaroos in this uh in a playoff series, then I don't know, maybe Seattle, San Francisco could be a little more 50-50, or for that matter, uh, to a lesser extent, I'm going to give that to Vancouver. But it's 1-1 after 1, and Vancouver did have more possessions in the uh, opening frame there, so who am I to say? Anyway, it's going to be here uh, 6, that's going to be Bob Sabrin here with possession again, Sabrin this time with the 3, unable to do anything with it, so we had 2.5 minutes here, gone in the second period, and uh, that's going to be uh, Dave Duke back the other way. Duke with the nine. Duke's going to set up uh, Trent Beattie. And Trent Beattie there with the jack. That's going to be a good save for Al Miller. Up to the seven and a half minute mark. Where this is going to be any player here for Seattle. Let's go with Guile Fielder. And a fielder pretty much automatically, except for a jack, actually. I'm not going to play with injuries, especially not in a short series. I thought about it, but I don't think I'm going to bother injuring Fielder. So... Uh, let's see here. So, uh, but it means that he doesn't actually play to anybody in scoring position. Wear that with a four. He only would have been injured for a few shifts anyway. I don't want to keep track of that. Keep my simple game simple. Anyway, it's going to be uh, so. Yeah, two more cards were burned there. So, with this uh, third sequence here, it's going to be Jim Bear with it. And Bear with the ace that's automatically through. He gets it to Ch uh, Carl Buddy Boone. I almost want to say Chuck Boone. And Carl Boone unable to get the goal. Uh, we get the six, though. Again, Vancouver, it's going to be David Duke with it here once more. He'll be able to get through the Seattle team defense. He gets it to Trent Beatty. Trent Beatty here. He's had a nose for the net, but he's misfiring. And uh, with the ace there now, it's going to be Guile Fielder with it again, this time with the queen, but he needs a red queen in order to penetrate Vancouver's defense. Vancouver, they're really their game plan, their strategy is to keep on Guile Fielder. Not a bad one. Uh, it's going to be uh, Jerry Leonard here with the puck. Leonard here with the four. He's unable to play it to anybody in scoring position. So two more coming off the pack here. And I'm going to have to double check here. I don't th I think I'm almost, but not quite there for the end of the second period. I want to go fast as well. Bob Cabell. Cabell is going to set up somebody in scoring position, and that is going to be Bob Cabell. So Cabell trying to go end-to-end here with the puck, but with the two evidently out of steam. And as I suspected, that's the end of two. You can get sort, of, sort of get a feel for it anyway. And you can also, you can count 32 cards separately before playing uh, the period out. Anyway, I'm going to shuffle. And this is game one, period three. Two goals were scored uh, pretty early, actually. I mean, in the first period of the game, as I recall, is Bill McFarland scoring for Seattle and Jim Baird quickly responding for Vancouver. So, and then, then we had a scoreless second period. Anyway, to start off the third here, it's going to be David Duke with it once more there. The five, unable to play it to anybody in scoring position. Two more coming off the uh, top. And this time it's going to be Les Hunt here for the Canucks. Hunt with the 10 automatically threw up to Carl Buddy Boone. And with the Jack, that's going to be yet another good save. Al Miller's been tested this game and tests that he has passed. Guile Fielder this time with the Joker. That's automatically threw back the other way for Seattle to the Jack there. Don Chupka already with a point in this game. And the four, look at that. He narrowly misses. It beat Villamere and just tried wide. Anyway, with a seven here now, it's going to be Larry Popian with the puck. And again, like with Fielder, I'm not going to bother with the injury. Uh, so we'll just take two more here off the uh, top. Uh, the Jack here, it's going to be Rudy Fillion actually for the uh, Seattle Totems there with the King. He's going to be able to penetrate the Vancouver defense. He gets the puck to, uh, to Warren Hall there. And with the three, Hall unable to score as well. So uh, we get here, it's going to be uh, uh, with, uh, who is it? It's Barlow with the puck here. And uh, the four here, I'm all paranoid now, the whole Bill Bob thing from earlier in the season. So he, anyway, he's unable to maneuver it to anybody in scoring position here with a scoring chance. So it's going to be Carl Buddy Boone here with it again and the five as well. So could we actually have sudden death OT here? This is a playoff series. And if you've been paying attention, you might have told me in one, one more sequence. Let's see this looking pretty good actually for Seattle here. Could they steal one late? Gordy Sinclair with it with the eight. He's going to be able to set somebody up here with a chance to score. It's going to be a team player for the Seattle Totem, so they will need an ace to score. We're going to say it's going to be Warren Hall again. Hall with the ace. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That was the only thing that they could score on here at the tail end. I swear I did not go back and manipulate the deck. Anyway, what a heartbreaking loss for the Vancouver Canucks here in the series opening game here. The 2-1. Uh, verdict there, late courtesy of Hall. Hall sticking the dagger in there, the final second. That is the final sequence. That is the way that dog hockey works. I mean, there are there are modifications, adjustments to it that you can make, but with this entire season so far, I've played it, whether I was using deck of cards or these cards, I mean deck of cards, the, the app or the website, uh, I would just do eight sequences per uh, period for this uh, particular game. So anyways, 2-1 Seattle here after game one. I'm going to shuffle and switch and be back for the second game.
Back for game two, it was Wayne Hall late again sticking the dagger in his turn in the knife in the Vancouver Canucks there in a game that was tied 1-1 throughout the bulk of it. Uh, Wayne Hall, Bob Barlow, that's a bad nervous habit. Anyway, I think I've got it correct here. Um, I wanted to see on the spreadsheet, actually, that I just have first initials as well, like it is on these cards, but I just double-checked here. That's not entirely true, so... I mean, it's actually not true at all. Anyway, let's get things going here really quickly. And it's going to be uh, actually right off the start here. So it's going to be Robert Cabell. Cabell did produce in the last game. Cabell here has a six. He's going to set up in scoring position there. Buddy Boom, Buddy Boom with a five, unable to get through. So uh, second sequence here, the game up to the five-minute mark. Jerry Leonard, Jerry Leonard with a four, unable to do much of anything with it here. Five minutes gone now in the first period of the second game. Van or, uh, Seattle up one nothing in the series. Well, I wonder if that's an omen, a foreboding or something. Anyway, it's going to be here. Jim Powers. Jim Powers with the ace looking pretty good for Seattle here. And Guile Fielder with the puck. Guile Fielder actually with the jack. That's going to be a nice save actually by Jill Villamere in the end here. And the nine, that's going to be... Uh, Bill McFarland. Bill McFarland did score in the last game. McFarland, unfortunately, though, he's unable to uh, maneuver it here. He should try shooting next time. It's going to be the Jack this time. Rudy Fillion with it. Fillion with a four as well. Similarly, so Seattle has possession, but they've been they haven't been uh, effective with it. Uh, this time it's going to be Vancouver back the other way, trying to make them pay for that. Hutchinson now. Hutchinson with the King. He can penetrate the Seattle defense on Kings and Kings only. He gets it to seven. Larry Popian. Popian with the Queen. Kings and Red Queens. Vancouver Canucks have taken what I believe is their first lead in the series. And they're up one nothing here, courtesy of Popian. And I think it's at Ron Hutchinson. And I uh, just want to double check here. Yep, so Popian from Hutchinson and the seven of spades. We're looking at Hutchinson, actually, and since he can't assist twice in a goal, we're going to call it one assist goal and play on. Rudy Fillion, he has the puck again here with the ace. He's through, through to four, through to Jimmy Hay on the defense. James Hay, and look at that. Similar, similar um, playing out, actually, similar progression to the initial game in this series where Vancouver, you know, they bit back almost immediately and managed to tie the game. Seattle's done the same here in game two. And we should look for a secondary assist on that goal. So the Ace of Hearts, we're going to Guile Fielder, of course. So two and a half to go here in the first period. In the final possession of the frame, it's going to be Phil Maloney for the Canucks. Maloney with the King. He's through. Does he have time? Let's see. He gets it to nine. Bob Cabell. And of course, I've stopped using this a while ago. But uh, there's here for decoration, I guess, now. Anyway, Cabell kind of flubs on the shot there. And so after one period of play, much like in game one, we have a 1-1 one -one, uh, score here in the second and a little bit in game two. We're headed into the second period of Game 2. Be right back. And back for Period 2 of Game 2 here with Doc Hockey. And sometimes when I call these games, I get so indecisive, I don't even know if I want to use a nominal or an ordinal uh, number. Or cardinal or ordinal number, actually, for that matter. Uh, so with that said, there we go. Uh, it's going to be here, uh, Gord Sinclair with it to kick us off here in Period 2. Late in Period 1, there was Jimmy Hayes scoring from, uh, who set him up initially? Uh, Fielder was involved in the goal. And I'm going to have to double check my even Philly on toward the tail end. Anyway, this time it's going to be Gordy Sinclair with a 10. He's going to get through automatically. He gets it to the Jack, Don Chuka. Don Chuka with the King. He's going to put Seattle up 2-1 here early in the second period. So it was Chuka from... Oh, my goodness. Wow, am I that tired already? It's going to be Chuka. It's not early here. Chuka from Sinclair and uh, the Joker. I, just, I know there's a way you can... Pick your choice or whatever. I don't bother. There are enough two assist goals in this. So I'm just going to go with the one assist uh, goal here. And Seattle's going to keep possession. Guile Fielder with it on Red Queens Fielder. He's going to set up uh, Bill McFarland. Bill McFarland with the ace. And so the Seattle Totem is taking over here in game two. They are up one game in the series. And uh, secondary assist on that goal. We look here with the eight of spades. That's going to be Bob Barlow. So... Uh, we're going to have the Jack of Hearts here. It's going to be Jim Baird this time with it. And Baird here off the draw. Baird, he sets up uh, Ron Matthews, the defenseman. Matthews unable to score. Uh, we get uh, Phil Maloney here with possession. Phil Maloney with the Joker through to King. Phil Maloney, individual effort, trying to go end to end. Al Miller stuffs him. Anyway, three here now, so it's going to be Marty Howe with it. Not that Marty Howe either. Uh, and how I'm just going to burn a couple of cards here. He's unable to do much of anything with it. And with a seven here, that's going to be Larry Popian. Again, he's produced in this. Popian with the ace looking to set somebody up this time, the four. And that's Ford. Ford with a nine. He needed an ace or a ten to score. Close but no cigar there for Vancouver. Uh, looking to get back to within one here. Anyway, it's going to be Robert Cabell here. He's got a good, uh, as good a chance as any. Gonna speak the English. So it's gonna to go to Ron Matthews this time. Matthews with a two. Let me double check. 
So I guess we have two and a half minutes to go here in the second period, and it's going to be Marty Howe with it once more. Howe this time of the five, so that's it. Four, two periods of play here. Three, one, Seattle. Game two, third period. And kick things off here, Vancouver. We're looking to a team player. The nine, probably going to go with Hughes. And uh, with the queen, unable to get through the Seattle defense. I'm going to uh, burn two more cards. Two and a half minutes in now here. Up to minute five, we have Trent Beattie with the puck. Beattie with the nine. And Beattie, he completes Delary Popian. Popian needed a five there. He didn't score on that. So five minutes in here. No goal for Vancouver yet. Vancouver really needs something here. If they you know, fall down two games to none, that's as good as going down three games to none, more or less. I mean, you only have to come back and win three in a row instead of four. But uh, things are looking pretty dire. Where Jimmy Hay would have the puck here in the second or the third sequence here. So we're up to seven and a half minute mark. We're on our way to it. And again, that'd be the third injury, but I'm not doing them, not bothering with them. Anyway, with the six, that's going to be uh, Bob Saverin here. Saverin. And uh, with the three, is it Bob or Bill? Am I confusing him with somebody from another decade, from another era? Quite possibly I am. Anyway, that was Saverin, and he's unable to get anything through. Two more cards coming off the pile. And we have an ace here. It's going to be Phil Maloney. Phil Maloney here with the nine. Phil Maloney with the nine here, trying to get his team back into it to Ron Hutchinson. Ron Hutchinson with the eight. And that is just barely going to be a goal there for the uh, Canucks. So we're looking at a one-goal game here late. At least it's close. So Hutchinson from Maloney and two of clubs. That is Jim Baird. So Hutchinson from Maloney and Baird here. In the third period we go, we have the four. That's going to be Don Ward. Ward here with the seven. And uh, two more cards coming off the pile there with Ward unable to complete much of anything. Gordy Sinclair with it though this time. Sinclair will get something done. Uh, with it here to Rudy Filion. Filion here with the Queen. That's going to be saved there by Gilles Villemere. And this could be the final. I'm going to double check here. I know we're getting pretty late into it where Trent Beattie has the puck. Beattie through with the ace. Could he tie the game here? Could we have sudden death? Four to four. Four with the three here. And be just before I accident, uh, accidentally play one sequence too many, unfortunately, I'm going to have to announce that this is the end of game two. Anyway, at least it's been a close one. You know, Seattle took game one, two, one. Vancouver did come back and get a goal, but it wasn't quite enough in the end. So Seattle up two games to none in the series, courtesy of a couple of one goal victories. And I'm going to shuffle and come back here with game three. So it is Bob Saverin there for Seattle. And Seattle is back in Seattle for game three, trying to close out the series here against the Canucks. Been a couple of close games in it so far. And it's going to be a Vancouver team player here starting things off. We'll give it to Keller. But Keller with the four unable to complete anything for his team. Two more cards coming off. We're two and a half minutes into the third game. And it's going to be Jim Powers here with the puck for the Seattle Totems. Powers also unable to get anything done with it. We're five minutes into it now. With the queen, that's going to be Bob McCusker. He's been suspiciously quiet in this. He's going to penetrate the... Uh, Totem's defense, McCusker gets it to Maloney. Maloney with the Joker. Unfortunately, he's Jokered out here being on the road. So I think we're seven and a half in. Even if we're not, we're going to play forward here. It's going to be Jim Baird with it. Jim Baird, he can't do anything against Seattle's defense. The Totem's here tight defensively. And the seventh, though, Vancouver here with the possession. Popian, let's see if they can do anything with it. Popian trying to produce some more here. He gets it to Hutchinson with a king. And kings and red queens. So it's going to be Vancouver again taking the lead once more. They've now had a couple of them in the series. They've just been getting edged out thus far. Let's see if they can stay alive here. Game three, the Canucks do face elimination with this being a best of five. So it's uh, uh, Hutchinson here from his Popian, I believe. Hutchinson from Popian. And uh, let's go to the secondary assist. We have Hutchinson again. <laughs> okay, hopefully I shuffled well enough. It's going to be the 10 there. So it's going to be Buddy Boom, Buddy Boom here with the Jack. Uh, I've seen that a few times as well. A couple more cards coming off here. We get the 10. So it's going to be Buddy Boone here with a once more. So with a 7. This time he plots it through to Jim Baird. And Jim Baird, they've been jokered out twice in the period. This is a one nothing game where it could be 3 nothing. It's been almost all Vancouver here in period 1. And uh, it is, let's see, the team player here. We're going to give it to Craig. And... Uh, Three, he's not going to be able to do anything with it. So uh, two more cards here coming off the pile. And so with a couple of team players here and everything, it means that uh, it's one nothing here for Vancouver after one period of play in game three. Okay, so into two here. The Canucks, again, they're just trying to stay alive in this one, but it's going to be Guile Fielder with it here out of the gate for Seattle. Fielder, he gets it to Don Chupka. Chupka with the two. 
And uh, broken up there by the Vancouver defense, where now they have possession. Les Hunt with it. Hunt with the 10. He gets it through 2 4. Ford. Ford with it. Oh my goodness, it's the second time, too. And he needs an ace or a 10 to score. So it is going to be the, the ace this time. Phil Maloney. Phil Maloney with an 8. Phil Maloney gets it to Robert Cabell. Robert Cabell with a 10. We have a 2 0 game here for the Vancouver Canucks. Trying to make a bid here to stay in this series. This is their first multiple goal lead as well. And uh, let's see. Seattle have one in game two. Uh, the secondary assist there is going to uh, Larry Popian, actually. So, again, he's been producing for Vancouver in the series. Let's drop the puck, get things going here, continuing right away. Where Hay has the puck this time with an H, just barely able to get it through. He's going to get it to Guile Fielder. Fielder, not the goal scorer there. Villamere with a the save there. The face card means Villamere was tested. At least that's how I choose to interpret it. And I don't know why one wouldn't. Anyway, it's going to go here there to uh, Bill McFarland. Bill McFarland here with the Queen. That is just barely going to get through, penetrate the Vancouver defense here to the King, Jim Powers. Jim Powers here with the Red Jack again. Villamer, though he's standing tall, trying to protect and preserve Vancouver's lead and his own shutout. But it's going to be with possession again here. The Totems, the Jack, that'll be broken up by Vancouver's defense, burning a couple more cards here. With the three this time, it is Marty Howe. Marty Howe with the King. He gets through the Totems defense. How excellently gets it to Carl Boone. Boone with the six. We got a three nothing lead here for the Vancouver Canucks. Backs to the wall. We got Vancouver in desperate mode here. And uh, the, and they've got the puck again here. Now it's going to be David Duke, but he can't do anything with it. And that is the end of two periods. Back for the third with Vancouver up by three and starting off here with possession as well. Ron Matthews this time. Matthews with a nine will be successful. He gets it to Boone. Boone looking for another. He doesn't get it here. It's going to be Seattle now up to the five-minute mark here. It's going to be Bob Barlow. Joker through automatically for the home team. Gets it to Jim Powers. And this time Powers is successful. Breaking a Villemer's shadow bid. We can see it now that Seattle has scored here early in the third. So it's Powers. And uh, flipping for a secondary assist here, we have uh, the six of spades there. So Barlow. And was Barlow initially, though? My goodness. With the eight. Yes, it was. Right. So so it's just going to be Powers and Barlow there for the goal. And I remember, it isn't early here. So it's going to be the four there. It's going to be Don Ward. Don Ward, unfortunately, not able to do anything with it. So we go to the two and the six. Let's give it to uh, Connick this time. And uh, three, unable to uh, make a bid successfully for it. So two more coming off. the. Uh, those are good cards, too. Anyway, with the eight this time, Hutchinson again for the Canucks. Hutchinson with the ace. Hutchinson gets it to Beattie with the king. And that means Vancouver has restored their three-goal lead here in the middle of the third. And the secondary assist here, we looked at the jack of clubs. going to be LeBron, Al LeBron here with a rare point. Uh, so we have a king here. That's going to be Gordy Sinclair. Seattle running out of time with the queen, with the red queen. They do penetrate the defense. That's going to Jim Powers looking for another goal. Gilles Villemer has other ideas. And the four here. Let's see. Seattle might be out of time, actually. Hunt here with the seven. I'll have to double check. Two more carrots coming off the pile. So this is one reason, actually, why I did uh, come up with uh, with the uh, Doc variant. Uh, because... Um, well, basically, Seattle can't come back in this. So Vancouver's one, but we have one more sequence to flip through anyway. Uh, we're just going to be the queen here, Bob McCusker. Uh, so uh, that's not his nickname or anything. He's just uh, on the card there. Anyway, with the eight, he gets it through too. Let's see here's six, Ron Hutchinson. And Hutchinson doesn't score, but it uh, doesn't really matter here if you're Vancouver. Uh, you've made your way back into this series. This series now is the totems up two games to one. So I'm going to set things up here for game four. We have a game four. All right, game four here. Vancouver trying to upset the course of history. Seattle had a chance to close out the show in Seattle in game three, and they didn't get it done. So let's see what we get here for game four. We get Seattle here with the puck off the uh, in the initial sequence here. It's uh, Duke unable to do much of anything with it. And uh, let's see here. We get a five there for Jimmy Hay. Jimmy Hay here with the queen. He does penetrate the Canucks defense. We're looking to a team player here with the nine. Maybe Kozowski. And with the eight, they needed just an ace, an ace, and only an ace to score. Where they quit? This is this is wrong. Oh, oh, what happened there? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Would that have had any bearing on it? I think it. Oh my goodness! Wow, straight to tool time for this as well. Hold on now. But again, we can play it back, and that's the beauty of a game like this. We got a six and a five, so Sabrin, that's not going to matter. Okay, so four. And then the five this time, that's Beattie. 
BD with the queen, unfortunately. So that, wow. So two cards burned. And so sequence three here, it is the Canucks maintaining possession. Look at that. You get a whole different read with a different team and a different rating. Ron Hutchinson there with it. He's been pretty prominent in this. And the Joker, he's going to get it through automatically. A continuation of that. But Phil Maloney fans in the shot there with the three ace. It's Phil Maloney with it again. He's going to give it another try. This time the Seattle team defense is all over him. Two more cards get burned here. And this time the nine, that is Ron Matthews with it. Matthews with a six and the seven. Uh, Larry Popian here with the queen. Kings and red queens. Al Miller does manage to come up with the stop where the eight's going to be Bob Barlow back the other way too. So he blunders. And two more coming off here. So we get a five this time. That's going to be Jimmy Hay with it. But again, the Jack, that's going to be able to get through these mutually tight defense here of the respective teams. We get a team player summoned for here. It's going to be Wayne Hall, game winner in game one, game one hero. Wayne Hall, he manages to put it through this time to four for Jimmy Hay with the seven. Just a narrow miss. End of one. So a scoreless opening stanza with Vancouver facing elimination and a thought that I had as I was shuffling is one of numerous things really that, that I enjoy about this game. Though this is game four, notice that I've basically interacted with the entire roster on both teams. Uh, the and, and really it's the assist dynamic as well. I mean, there's the team defense and other things as well to bring it, well the team defense and the goaltending into it. But I really like that, again, compared to some other games, not saying that one is necessarily any better or worse than the other, but one way in which this game is different, and it's a difference that I really like, is that you're interacting with the roster as you're going through. It's not You don't always have to wait until you get a chance or a goal or whatever to... Uh, to uh to, to i don't know that kind of it just kind of brings you into the game i find works for me anyway so we have a five here it's going to be trent bd with it here and in the opening sequence here bd unable to set it up any to anyone in scoring position uh where ward as well so, uh, similarly uh he will gaff and fail and so we're five here into the second it's been a really quiet one here so far watch it now be watch 10 goals be scored from here bd with it once more now bd with a nine this time he's going to have another try he gets it actually to himself again so a give and go there but unfortunately the shot is not a great one where we have the queen now with it so it's going to be bob mccusker mccusker with a nine mccusker he sets up jim baird and jim baird look at this vancouver trying to tie the series down two games to one after three but they're up one nothing here in the second period in the secondary assist i don't think we have a king of diamonds we don't but we're going to count that card anyway we carry forward it's going to be guile fielder here look at he seattle right back and with the two basically only works actually no that works for maloney as well uh to the seven so fielder he gets it to philly on and philly on over the king that's going to be a one one tie so these teams have been pretty close been a pretty close pretty tight series thus far and uh, this game's been no exception i guess uh it's going to be um Bill McFarlane there with the secondary helper. And it's going to be any player on Vancouver. Why not Phil Maloney? Phil Maloney with the jack, unfortunately, though. And again, the reason why, and I've said this before, but the reason why I don't bother with the injuries is because uh, these players already missed time in this respective season, and that's already factored into the card. And so even though this is only a partial a season replay and not a full season replay if they've missed time they're already sort of lower on the card than they might be normally anyway uh, just one thing to consider here uh so with the ace it's uh, gonna be phil maloney here with possession and uh, phil maloney here with the four maloney will get it to the queen jim bear jim bear with the jack that's gonna be a save for al miller of seattle and two and five this time so we're gonna give it to adam keller keller with the 10 definitely gonna put it through keller he sets up carl buddy boom buddy boom with the jack that's gonna be another stop for al miller and glad that i didn't reach for another card because if I'm not mistaken, and again, it isn't early here, and if I am mistaken, I apologize, obviously, but I'm pretty sure there there was one team and two secondary assists, so that would mean here that we get to get ready for the third period. So after two periods of play here in Game 4, we have a 1-1 score, Seattle up 2-1 in the series. Period 3, and could we have Game 5? Could we have Sudden Death? Let's see. Uh, we get uh, Bob McCusker here with the puck with a five, just a narrow miss from McCusker. Actually, two more coming off there, two and a half minutes into the third period where McCusker will have another try here. This time he's successful. He gets it to Larry Popian with a six and Popian as well with a narrow miss. Van those Vancouver could really come to regret those. What might have been here, but Les Hunt and Les Hunt, he's going to set it up to a team player. Let's see, could there be an unlikely hero here with the eight? Oh my goodness, and the seven. So let's see here, three, six. Try to do this a little more official. Three, five, seven. They got a lot of team players. They got a lot of team players. Let's give it to Marty Howe. 
Marty Howe, Minna Marty Howe, awarding them. Let's say that they they wouldn't have done video review them, but let's say that the ref uh, ruled that the puck, uh, the linesman ruled that the puck, somebody ruled that the puck uh, touched Howe and uh, on its way in. And we got a 2-1 game here for Vancouver. So Vancouver goes, hold on now, that was a... Uh, so just double checking there, Howe from Hunt. Let's get a secondary assist here. That's going to be uh, Al LeBron. Okay. Vancouver here, some unlikely, some unsung heroes, and it's going to be Howe again. So they're standing in Vancouver. That is, uh, no, he's not going to be able to put it through there, the Seattle team defense. That's two cards coming off the file. 2-1 Vancouver trying to get back to the series and tie it where this time it's going to be. Sorry, Bob Sabrin with it here. Just over half an hour, but we are in a game four in the series. Anyway, Sabrin there with the four, unable to uh, put it through, so... We get this time in fellow four. It's going to be Les Hunt here again. Hunt trying to make something happen again where it looks like he could. He's made a good bid for it, but McCusker not able to get a good shot away there. But still, Vancouver's up 2-1, and they have possession there. It's going to be Jim Baird. Unfortunately, Jim Baird unable to connect with anyone. And this time we get the Jack. This could be Seattle's last chance here. And Philly, unfortunately, unable to complete the pass. And with the team player and the secondary assist, that does it actually by a narrow uh, margin here of 2-1 here. Once again, we've had a couple of these in the series, at least three one-goal games here, the four. And it's going to be, I'm pretty sure that's right. Right down that path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, we're going to game five now. I hinted at the very start of this project that I would use Paradise for elimination games. Now that I've actually done that and tried to do a Calico project, Given what's transpired with Doc in this series and how we've we've managed to flip our way here to uh, to such a you know a close a, a tight series here a good back and forth series ups and downs ebbs and flows Seattle and Vancouver Seattle again you know turning the knife in Vancouver there in the final sequence of Game One and you know this here being tied going into the third period in Vancouver just pulling ahead Seattle running out of time and so what I'm trying to say here roundaboutly is that. Uh, I really think that I need to go to Doc here for game five for the fifth and final deciding game. And so I'm shuffling live here, but whatever, this video is already over half an hour. And uh, I'm going to try to timestamp this one as well a little more meticulously than normal and try to do it by the game and maybe even the period. So anyway, we'll see what we get here. It's, uh, oops, I, I can't even turn the cards. Okay, I'm going to pause and shuffle. Back at Seattle Center Arena for the fifth and final contest here of this best of five. And in the opening sequence, it is the uh, totems with the puck here. Jim Powers, Jim Powers, unsuccessful. And up to the five-minute mark now, it's going to be Dom Ward here, tested again. Ward with the two, unable to get anything through with that. So five minutes in here now where the Canucks get their first possession. The team player, let's give it to Hughes. This time Hughes with a jack, unable to get anything done with it. Two more cards come off, seven and a half in. Up to the 10-minute mark this time, let's try Phil Maloney. Phil Maloney, unable to get through the uh, Seattle totems defense there. He's knocked back. And uh, so it's going to be Marty Howe with it, though. Howe with the 10. Marty Howe, unfortunately, they get jokered out on the road. Right? Howe with the 10 through. Okay, you have to be careful not to burn too many cards there. Uh, so it's going to be Fielder, though. Fielder with the 5. Look at that. Too bad it couldn't have been Fielder at the top of the card. You're saying if you're going for the totem. So it's going to be here with the Queen. Bob McCusker. McCusker with a 6. McCusker with a 6 to the 4 to the 4. And Ford finally gets through where he's had a number of opportunities here in this series. one nothing Vancouver. Keep in mind the Canucks were down two games to none in this. And here it is. one nothing here in period 1 of game 5. Let's flip for a secondary assist. And uh, it's going to be Carl Buddy Boom picking up another point in this. Two and a half minutes to go here. Where it's going to be Fielder trying to get one back right away with the six. He sets up Bob Sabrin and Bob Sabrin with the jack. That's going to be a big save there for Jill Villamere keeping Vancouver ahead of the tail end of one. So one has to wonder, with only 40 minutes and basically maybe only 16 sequences to go in this thing, if the Seattle Totems are begin beginning to a buckle under pressure at home. I mean, the most decisive game of, the, of uh, this series here was Game 3, and uh, Vancouver uh, beating Seattle. I think it was the only mul multiple goal victory in this thing thus far anyway. Um, so we're going to uh, we're going to have seven there. It's going to be Don Chupka for Seattle out of the gate. But again, the two. So Chupka misplays. It just feels like they're kind of caving under the pressure here. Where it's going to be the king, Bob Cabell back the other way. And Cabell, he plays a clean through two, eight. That's Trent Beattie and Trent Beattie with the nine. The Canucks here up by a pair. Here in period two, they have a two nothing lead. Let's see here with the secondary assist. That's going to be Ford again. I'm trying to think what's this. It wouldn't be Gerald Ford, would it? Anyway. Four of the secondary. 
Yes, sorry, I knew it wasn't Gerald Ford, George Ford. Remember, again, it's 1963, and it's not the NHL. So, anyway, it's uh, uh, let's get things on the go here. Again, we have a nine. It's going to be Ron Matthews here with possession. The three unable to get it through, so two more cards coming off here. And uh, the Canucks, so it's been all Canucks, almost all Canucks, except this time it's going to be Guile Fielder definitely through automatically. Fielder to the Jack, John uh, Don Chupka, and Chupka again similarly misfires. Now we get the six. Dave Duke back the other way. Duke needs an eight where he only gets a six. Two more cards burned. Uh, it's going to be Guile Fielder with it once more. Fielder trying to make the magic happen here to three, to two, to a team player. Could Seattle have someone unlikely step up with the 10, but they needed an ace. They don't get it from their bench. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna play on here with the five. This time it's gonna be Jimmy Hay, Jimmy Hay, and he's unable to get anything done with it either. Two and a half minutes to go here in the second. And that's going to be the Canucks with possession once more. Jim Baird, he doesn't do anything with it. But after two periods of play here, again, at Seattle Center Arena in Game 5, it is the Canucks up by two. They were down two games to nothing in this series. They're up two goals to none uh, here in the fifth and final game of this best of five. Third period where Seattle, they've got to try to score at least twice in eight sequences here in the series. Let's see, they do have the puck here off the opening draw. It's going to be Gordy Sinclair with it, but Sinclair with a two. Look at that. So... Nothing. They missed out on a good card there as well with that ace. It's going to be back the other way now. Bob Cabell with it, but Seattle team defense takes it away. Unfortunately, they need to generate more offense. And I got to burn two more cards here, right? Don't I? Hold on now. I'm not sure here that I don't scrum. Again, it's one of those things I'm like 99.99. Add a few more nines to a percent sure. So we got 15 minutes to go here in this thing where it's going to be the Canucks with possession again. David Duke again with a narrow miss. But unfortunately, at this point, that that's even good for Vancouver. That buys them some time. Uh, so Chupka here with it, though. And again, they're getting the low cards in the second card of the sequence are the Seattle Totems. We get the Joker throw this time. That's Fielder. Fielder pretty much a guaranteed through, but it's to a team player. And again, Seattle, as we've seen their bench here, let me see here. Can Don Ward do something with it with the nine? And the answer is no, he cannot, but it is the uh, Totems with possession here once more. Barlow, they're in desperation mode now. Bob Barlow, and he gets it to 10 there. Bob Barlow to Bob Saverin with the jack. It's going to be Villamere with a save, and it's going to be five here for the Canucks. And those who've crossed the border to attend this now, they, they're optimistic. They're beginning to celebrate. They're feeling real good about this. But uh, Beattie unable to get anything done with it here. So toward the tail end here, and it's going to be uh, how with it, and they're celebrating. They really feel, they sense that the totems have run out of time, so these last couple of cards don't matter. Vancouver, they've completed a sweep. If you discount the first couple of games, it's going to be the Vancouver Canucks uh, basically changing, bucking, reversing, however you want to say it. Uh, history and it's going to be the Vancouver Canucks actually the lowly eight nine and three I think they finished eight nine and three in this 20 game condensed season so the sub 500 record Vancouver Canucks will go to the final where uh, a heavily favored <laughs> it's not going to matter either way either a hev heavily favored Portland Buckaroos or a heavily favored uh, even the, the San Francisco Seals who won it historically will await the Vancouver Canucks I mean now in real life they did push the totems to game seven in this playoff series so again it was pretty close in real life I think this hardly seems far-fetched where they lost the game uh, lost it by one game historically that they could win it by one game here especially in a shortened series where anything can happen so I have no regrets to this one here I wasn't looking again for historical facts simile a Xerox of the history I just kind of wanted to have fun with this with some different names with Stan Chuke Maxwell as well uh, get him uh, in on there in uh, some games like the uh, last video that I did here with Doc Hockey and so there you go it's going to be the Vancouver Canucks getting to the final of this one Chill Villamere delivering the shutout in game five where he was tested at least more than once courtesy of a face card from the seattle totems but they shut down the likes of field or barlow powers bill mcfarland chuka bob Saverin, jerry leonard anyway these guys are all done it's going to be the likes of carl buddy boone phil maloney jim bear david duke bob mccusker robert aka bob cabell trent bd larry popium ron hutchinson ron matthews George Ford and Buddy Boone again there I mentioned him the aforementioned Buddy Boone where we can't forget that Marty Howe as well came in it's not that Marty Howe not Gordy's son no relation but he did come up big in a crucial moment here in this series 
Uh, anyway, anytime, any consideration that you give to anything like this, while it's never expected, definitely always appreciate it. And it's going to be the Vancouver Canucks going to the final here. If you only catch the tail end of this, then I might as I mean, you can see the 2 nothing score there anyway. So the Canucks ending on a high note and a winning note. And uh, when you win the last game of a playoff series, you do typically advance. So that's what the Vancouver Canucks have done here. Anyways, cheers, thanks, good night, bye for now.